You're watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. I'm Krista Recchio. This is News That Makes You Healthier, and today we're talking about how to beat neurological issues like progressive MS with functional medicine and to use food as medicine with Dr. Terry Walls, author of The Walls Protocol. Dr. Walls went from being in a wheelchair to one year later biking 18 miles a day. Welcome to the program, Dr. Walls. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. So for people that don't know about your practice and your book, uh, you still see patients, is that correct? Yes, I uh, see patients in a traumatic brain injury clinic and in a therapeutic lifestyle clinic. So who is your typical patient? What are the different uh, services you offer? And uh, kind of a summary of your book. So uh, a typical patient in a traumatic brain injury clinic is someone who's had uh, blast injuries, head injuries, who uh, probably has a lot of mental health problems anxiety, uh, PTSD, they may have bipolar irritability. Uh, we use a lot of uh, nutrition protocols to help them recover more quickly. In my uh, therapeutic lifestyle clinic, we often have uh, complex uh, problems, uh, a lot of autoimmune problems, again, using the uh, diet and lifestyle. And then I have my clinical trials uh, involving secondary and primary progressive MS. But uh, we started the show with, you went from, with. with in a wheelchair, and there's a picture of you on your book we're not gonna be able to show, it's not but it's not, not looking very healthy, to Correct. looking really healthy uh, on a bicycle. Uh, yes. And so, so you, you didn't, uh, I guess, go into complete remission, but you, you completely turned around the MS, or improved well, it. I think it's important for people to know that I had secondary progressive MS, and that's the uh, part where there is no remission. It's a steady downhill decline uh, at that point. And so no one's reported people getting better. Uh, using my uh, intensive nutrition, meditation, electrical stimulation protocol, I was able to, within a year's time, uh, get out of the wheelchair, walk without a cane, and in fact, is able to do an 18-mile bike ride with my family. Uh, and now, more importantly, I'm, I'm now doing clinical trials, testing that protocol in others. It's changed how I do uh, clinical practice. Uh, and it's uh, really revolutionized how I see disease and health. Have you seen uh, patients with similar results to yours that had MS? Um, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Uh, in our clinical trial, we have some people with uh, very, very exciting results. Yes. Okay. What about Parkinson's and Alzheimer's? Same type of effect with the WALS protocol? Uh, Sure. So I have uh, many hundreds of people that uh, follow me, or actually thousands that are following me on Facebook. Uh, and these people, uh, Walls Warriors, I call them, uh, post up uh, their pictures, their photographs. And they've given us videos. Uh, people with Parkinson's who have had uh, uh, major reduction in symptoms, uh, returning to work. Uh, people with memory loss who are uh, doing much better. Uh, people with fibromyalgia whose pain is uh, markedly uh, reduced, eliminated, whose energy is much better. Uh, diabetes uh, reversed, obesity. People are losing weight without being hungry. Um, many, many disease states uh, that are helped with this program. Let, let's dive in and, and talk about your protocol because this, what we hope is that this is inspiring so many of our viewers that there is hope and you can live a healthy, happy lifestyle in the midst of diagnosis. So what's the WALS protocol all about? So it's about teaching people how to feed their brain cells in the mitochondria, which are the uh, power plants in our cells, so they can function optimally. Uh, and that means uh, more uh, fruits and vegetables. And I have a very structured uh, plan for that. Uh, I'm quite tall. I'm six foot tall. So it's uh, not, uh, nine cups of fruits and vegetables, three cups of green leaves, three cups of sulfur-rich vegetables, cabbage family, onion family, mushrooms in that category, three cups of deeply colored like beets, carrots, uh, berries, oranges, uh, high quality protein, uh, that's the entry level. And then you could go on to the paleo diet or the paleo plus, which is the ketogenic. So we, we have it in phases so people can decide how quickly they wanna make these changes and how far they want to go with these changes. When did you, uh, were you diagnosed with MS first, is that what got you involved yes. in the nutrition and healing with food and uh, supplements? Absolutely. I was diagnosed in 2000. Uh, I, uh, being an academic doc, I went to the best MS center that I could find, uh, the Cleveland Clinic. Um, they uh, managed my care. Uh, still within three years, despite taking the latest, greatest drugs, 
my disease had transitioned to that progressive phase where there's no more improvement, only decline. I took um, Novantro and then I took Tizabri, continued to decline. It was clear I was headed towards becoming bedridden. And uh, that's when I got motivated to uh, take matters into my own hands, start reading the literature myself, uh, doing the research. I uh, created this long list of nutrients that were critical to my brain. Uh, then I uh, discovered functional medicine, had a longer list. And then, uh, you know, in the summer of 2007, I had really the, the brilliant idea was I should get these nutrients in the foods that I ate. So that was more research I had to do. Uh, and that was the beginning of the WALS protocol. At the same time, I had discovered uh, electrical stimulation and started using a electrical therapy device uh, manufactured by MP. And it was using that to uh, strengthen my muscles. And that was uh, also very, very helpful. Where do you apply this electrical uh, uh, stimulation? Uh, you put it over the uh, muscles uh, to uh, stimulate a contraction so that it makes the uh, effectiveness of the exercise uh, much more effective. It also let me tolerate the exercise uh, more vigorously. Um, it, it was uh, very, very helpful. Do you need to go through a doctor for, for e-STEM, or is it something that the average person can, can use? Uh, you'll need to uh, work with a physical therapist, um, and the therapist would do a test session in your clinic to be sure that you could tolerate it. Uh, they could design an exercise program, an e-STEM program, uh, specific for uh, your needs. Because with MS, we have different, we all have unique uh, uh, blocks or damages in our spinal cord and brain. So uh, what is not working for me will be very different than someone else with MS. So it really needs to be individualized. You know, when you think of uh, like eating all of these vegetables, great quality protein, a lot of people, especially like me, think of it as a weight loss program. Do you think that a lot of people that they, they don't realize the side effect to eating that way is to heal the body of so many different types of disease states? Um, well, if you're overweight, uh, you will likely lose weight, get back down to an ideal body weight, uh, probably what you're weighing in your early 20s. Uh, and then we work with people to make sure they don't become underweight, and we've been really quite successful with that. Um, and by giving your cells the uh, vitamins, minerals, essential fats, antioxidants, the foods that you need for your cells to work properly, they will repair you, rebuild you, a new you, molecule by molecule, cell by cell. And whatever your disease state is, uh, we have thousands of papers that uh, let us know as you improve the nutrition, the need for medications will decline, uh, often to where the person does not need medication for their chronic health problems if they really maximize the nutrient density of their diet. And that's what the Walls Diet does. We maximize the nutrient density it's, it's really the most nutrient-dense diet that our uh, research dietitians have ever analyzed or studied. So what are the main nutrient deficiencies that you see with neurological disorders or disease? Um, well, mineral deficiencies are uh, really very common. I'd say uh, uh, the vast majority have problems with inadequate uh, minerals. Uh, omega-3 and omega-6 fat ratios are off. Uh, they probably are very low in their antioxidant levels, uh, the kinds of uh, antioxidants that you'd see in greens and uh, really deeply colored. Uh, they are probably low in their thiols uh, and sulfur-containing compounds that are used for detoxification and for making uh, a lot of brain structures and neurotransmitters. You know, the, the people eat so much uh, white flour, sugar, high fructose corn syrup that at, say, the average American... Uh, is likely uh, depleted in many, many key nutrients. I agree. What about um, CoQ10? Can you talk about what that is? And I know it's oh, in your yeah. protocol and what it does. So CoQ10 is a, uh, an important part of the mitochondria, and there's something called the electron transport chain that's very important in how we generate energy. Uh, over the age of 50, we don't make it nearly as well. If you're taking statins, that interferes with the ability to make it. If you can't make your uh, CoQ10, your mitochondria are uh, strained. They're much more, uh, have much more difficulty creating energy. You'll have more fatigue, more problems with brain fog, more problems with heart failure. Uh, and so because statins are so commonly prescribed, particularly uh, to folks over the age of 50, 
um, many, many Americans are depleted in their CoQ and will develop uh, long-term health consequences as a result. To keep your MS under control now, are you taking some uh, medications, prescription medications? So uh, I take no disease-modifying drugs. I've taken no disease-modifying drugs since uh, early 2008. In 2007, I was taking uh, Celsept, which is a form of uh, immune suppressant that's used for transplant and for some people with MS. Um, and at, when I started my nutrient-dense protocol in November, uh, in February, I was having lots of energy and I couldn't sleep. And then it occurred to me, the reason I, uh, I was taking ProVigil for fatigue, that I needed to stop my ProVigil. Uh, and then I uh, called my neurologist uh, and told him there had been a big change. I, I went to see him. Now, mind you, the last time he had seen me, I was in a tilt recline wheelchair looking really bad. So I'm in the waiting room, and I stand up, uh, and I walk in. He's like, oh, my God. Uh, he was uh, so impressed that things had changed uh, so remarkably. Are some of your colleagues now coming on board and taking oh, a closer yeah. look? Uh, very much so. Uh, you know, I'm doing a clinical trial, testing my interventions and others. Uh, twice a year, we present our research data at either the Internal Medicine Research Day or the uh, Carver College of Medicine Research Day. Uh, and so people see uh, uh, the very, very exciting results that we're having. I've had uh, some of my scientists, colleagues, ask to join my study team because they know I'm freezing blood. And so they're pitching uh, interesting analyses for us to consider uh, doing on this frozen blood. Uh, so, uh, and I'd also tell you, I'm going around giving research seminars across the university uh, and now also across the country. I was uh, over in China uh, last fall talking about my research. Are you ever surprised at the results you get with uh, autoimmune diseases by just taking care of diet, and um, nutrition, and lifestyle? Uh, well, no. Uh, it, it makes perfect sense that uh, diet and nutrition is the cornerstone of health. Um, and uh, what is impressing me is that by taking the tact of creating health, I'm discovering that it really is the most effective treatment for chronic disease. You use your conventional medicines, of course, to take care of the chronic disease. But when you teach people how to use diet and lifestyle to create health, over the next three years, the symptoms of that chronic disease steadily decline. Would you say that there are millions of people here in America that are suffering that don't have to be? Um, yes. Uh, absolutely. You know, we, we have 60% of the population that's overweight and obese. They don't have to be. They could adopt the Wallace diet, get back to a healthy weight, have more energy, more vitality. Uh, we have an epidemic of relative infertility, people needing assisted reproductive technology. Again, many of those folks, if they use diet and lifestyle, those symptoms will reduce and they'll have fewer problems. There are 25 million people with autoimmune problems who have an autoimmune diagnosis, another 50 million who have autoimmune uh, symptoms, fatigue, pain, autoantibodies, but not yet enough damage for uh, a diagnosis. So that's 75 million with an autoimmune type of problem. They would be greatly served by understanding diet, lifestyle, uh, to reduce their symptoms, improve their function. Do you, do you live with some sense of like an urgency? It's like, I got to get this out there yeah. right away. And, and could you imagine if you'd have known this 30 years ago? Well, um, I, it had to happen the way it did. I had to be ill. I had to have four years in a total recline wheelchair to really be motivated to relearn all that biochem. But I'll tell you, I am so grateful to have my life back because I expected to be bedridden. I expected to become demented. Instead, I can ride my bike. I can walk easily. I'm writing books. I'm doing clinical research. I am uh, intent on creating an epidemic of health. And that's quite possible. I'm giving people the tools to take back their lives, to have an epidemic of health, to, ha to provide the real solution to the healthcare crisis that's facing our country. It's creating health, not controlling doctors. It's teaching people how to create health. That's beautifully said, an epidemic of health, and that's what we need to create, and that's the idea of making all medicine functional medicine and allowing people to understand their body can heal. I love it. Is your book in bookstores everywhere? Uh, March 13th, it will be in bookstores everywhere. Um, I'd encourage the listeners to go to my website, terrywalls.com, uh, and give us their email so they can download the free goodies that we talk about uh, in the book, because uh, there's a lot of uh, very useful things uh, that people want to pick up. 
Yes, so terrywalls.com, and then I would also encourage people to look at your TED Talk, Minding Your Mitochondria. That's how I first found out about you, and I have to say I was wickedly inspired by that talk, and I know millions of others were as well. You know, uh, the, uh, it's very interesting. So that talk's done very well. It's like 1.6 or 1.7 million views. Uh, the TED people apparently are, are getting nervous. They put a uh, big red block box on it saying, uh, this falls outside the curatorial guidelines, viewer discretion advised. Um, and they've contacted the person who organized my, the uh, TED Talk asking for my research, which we have given them our, you know, our posters, our presentations. We gave them a copy of my, uh, our recent paper that came out. Um, and it's worth noting that Ted had uh, Jill Bolte Taylor, a brilliant uh, neuroscientist who had a stroke, who, who gave a lovely talk about her experience with a hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, and there's no warning on that talk, which you know, has about 30,000, 40,000 views. And yet Ted feels the need to put a warning on a talk that tells people to eat more vegetables. I hope that they remove that warning. And I did see the talk on, on strokes. But um, I think this is where we get into the political realm. Because you and I were talking before the interview. And I did a TED Talk as well um, last year. And it was called Food as Medicine. And right after my talk, where I was talking about GMOs and how to use food as medicine, Ted outlawed that you can't use those terms. You can't, they called it junk science. You can't talk about food as medicine, GMOs. And my understanding is it's because of their sponsorship. Is, is yeah. that right? Their sponsorship well, changed you know, to pharmaceutical companies? And one can certainly look at who's giving them a lot of money now Monsanto, Dow Chemical, uh, the pharmaceutical industries. And one can ask the question, is that beginning to influence their curatorial decision making? And you know, certainly um, if they're going to say that the only science they'll present are, is a science that's universally accepted by all their peers, means they'll no longer have any innovation. But if somebody wants to watch that, they just go to TED, search your name. Is that right? Um, just Google Minding Your Mitochondria and you'll Minding find it. Minding Your Mitochondria. They could Google that and watch that talk. Yeah. And we are just about out of time. Uh, what is your final message to somebody watching this? Maybe they have a loved one. Uh, they, they themselves have uh, some autoimmune problems. And they're a bit skeptical because it's the simplicity of that yeah. your food can be your medicine. What do you say to them? Uh, a couple things. If I can get out of a tilt recline wheelchair or learning how to eat and live uh, for the optimal health of my cells, imagine what uh, eating for the optimal health of their cells could do for them. Um, this is something you could work with your primary care doc. I teach people how to do that. They can take their lives back. Uh, and you could do this as an experiment. Do it for three months and see what happens. Very nice. Krista? Dr. Walls, you are an unbelievable inspiration. So yeah. my takeaway to the viewers is don't accept a diagnosis and a decline in health as something that has to be. Dr. Wall, thanks for coming on the show. Great, great info. And, and keep up the good work. Thank you so very much. You've been watching uh, the Randy and Krista show, News That Makes You Healthier. I wish you good health.